Hey guys, welcome back to the first episode of HairTube for 2022. I'd firstly like to say thank you to everyone who supported me during the lockdown period. I'm sorry I've been quiet, um, but my priority and my focus was solely on the resurrection of my business after lockdown. Um, I'm sorry if you feel like I've neglected you, but I, I've noticed that many of you have left me messages of support, hoping that I'm doing all right. I thank you for all the messages of support. You've been, uh, for those of you who have my cell number, you've been sending me text messages, message me on Facebook and Instagram, and also on YouTube. So thank you very much, I really appreciate it. Let's have a chat about uh, what we're gonna do with Chloe's hair today, because as I said, it's gonna be a big makeover. So Chloe said she hasn't had hair done for quite some time. Yeah, five, six years. So, well, that's uh, a while, so let's spin around so you can have a look. You can see her hair is really long. Um, she's got quite a lot of regrowth there. And um, the last time she did color, she's um, put a semi, or looks like a permanent color, in her hair at home. Um, she's given me free reign, so I've had a little bit of a think about it. Uh, Chloe said that she'd be happy to cut her hair off quite short, but I said to her, like, it's not really just about cutting people's hair short, I really think, and not that I don't think she'd suit short hair, because I think she would. I think it's more about finding a, a combination of of a haircut with shape and colour that really works with her, with, um, her um, face shape and then the colour obviously with the skin tone. We flirted with the idea of going black. Yeah, I've been black before. Um, happy to go black, but looking for something different. Yeah, just, I don't know, black is a little bit, I mean, it'd be really like sort of bold and make yeah. a statement, but um, I think it'd be a bit safe. So, because it's still summer here in Australia and we haven't really had much of a summer to be honest. It's been quite wet and um, a little bit cool. Yeah, but I think February's uh, gonna be a lot warmer. So let's keep that summer vibe going. All right, so we're gonna start with cutting the length. And we've spoken about maybe doing like a lob length, um, focusing on around about the collarbones here on Chloe, and then really contouring her face with some nice layering and shaping. And then we're going to prepare her base with a uh, semi-permanent color. We're gonna use Matrix Color Sync. The reason why we're gonna do that is because for me, when I'm doing balayage, it's easier to have the base that you want and get it even. And then because we've got a product called Light Master with Bonda, we're allow it allows us to actually lighten the hair safely and gently. So I'm not concerned about putting a semi-permanent color in there and then moving, uh, removing it out because it's gonna be far easier than me doing balayage, whether it be foils or freehand, coloring around that, and then having to rinse that all out without getting it all mixed up and, and getting like, uh, colour crossover, so it sometimes can be a little bit of a longer process, but for me, um, it works better. So the process will be, we're going to cut the length off we don't need, not going to do the entire haircut, but we're going to give ourselves just that length and base to start with, then we're going to prepare the base with a nice semi-permanent colour, probably 5M in a matrix colour sink, then once we've got our beautiful canvas with our rough shape, we're going to do the balayage, then we'll, we'll rinse it, tone it, bring it back, we'll properly shape the hair and dry it and uh, I'll talk to you about uh, the techniques of the haircut and styling then. Are you excited? Yes. What a, what a way to start the year. I mean, blank canvas, beautiful person. Um, I'm ready to get started, so let's go. <laughs> Preparing the base, Matrix Color Sync, um, half 5WN and half 5WN. So we're going for a warm, uh, medium brown. Um, we want to keep some sort of warmth in the ends. Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit sort of, you know, flat. So, you know, warmth, summer, going into autumn. So uh, working with, you know, thinking of like sort of tones to do with, you know, uh, like the fall in the US, so like, you know, falling leaves, that sort of bronzy, brown, sort of ruddy tones without going towards a copper space. We want to stay back towards a natural warm brown. So um, I'm going to put this on and then when I'm done, um, I'm going to rinse it. And when you see us next, we're going to have uh, um, Chloe's base all prepped, ready to go for the balayage and dry, ready to go. That, like, there's no hope anymore. And then someone walks in in your life and just light it up or more like screw it up again. <laughs> well, I guess this is the main reason why I'm writing this song. Okay, just finishing off the application here, just making sure that we get that hairline. Uh, Matrix Color Sync, half 5WN, half 5WM. We're gonna process for 20 minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes processing time. 
Um, then I'll take Chloe to the basin, I'll rinse her out, I'll wrap dry it, and then when you come back, um, when we come back, we're gonna start the balayage. Okay, I'll just pull this down while I'm speaking to you guys so you can hear me. Um, starting with horizontal section, this will be the first and only section we can do in one. That's why I've split it into two, because the foil's not wide enough. I just find it easier to control when I work one side at a time as well, so. Colors in. Um, let's do a quick recap. So basically what we've done is we've um, cut Chloe's hair off, the length we don't need, it's on the floor over there. Um, we used um, a product to even out our base called uh, Color Sync by Matrix. We used half 5WN, half 5MM with 20 vol. We processed that 20 minutes, we rinsed and dried it. I put my foils in. I was gonna do like, um, like a balayage technique, freehand back combing. I decided to do pretty much a fullish head, like not too close together, but a full head-ish of weaves. Um, and the reason why I did that is because I actually want colour in there. So I've done a full head of weaves, we're gonna process that. Um, and then next time you see us, um, Chloe's hair is going to be rinsed, toned, and ready to finish the haircut. So we'll see you guys back in a bit. We're going to section down the middle. This is just for the purpose of uh, making sure that we're going to have symmetrical sections. The color's beautiful. You can see that sunlight um, shining on it from outside. It just looks absolutely sensational. And we're just gonna cut to the base of the cape. Be mindful of the tension. Continue to work. Bring all the hair to the back until you run out. Each section cross check like this, bring to the center, scissor underneath, and that just allows you to make sure that any little bits that you may have missed, you've got, and we just let that go. Do. As you guys have seen me do this before, I'll get you just to look down to the cell, into the side of the cell on there, so we don't have to worry about hitting the shoulder anymore. You can see it just gives you that guideline so that you're not guessing. Make sure you get that hair from behind the mask. Beautiful. I'll repeat that on the other side. Okay, so let's uh, 
let's shape the front of this haircut. And we're not doing classic layering, we're actually going to just uh, very gently and seamlessly frame Chloe's face, really focusing on bringing out those cheekbones and showing off some of this colour that I've placed around her face. So we're going to use my signature triangle, just head forward for me gorgeous, triangle into rectangle technique, which you guys have seen me do many times before. Making sure that the back of the section is shorter than the front, not the other way. And then we want to just bust up that solid line so that it falls more seamless. We don't want to cut into it and make it choppy. Let's see how that looks. That should just open the face up straight away. Look at that. Boof. Okay, so over the top of that, and you can see how that sits there really beautifully. We're going to do a second triangle straight over the top. This one goes from the crown to the corner of the eyes. This is to really open the face right up. Once I've got the section, I'll spin Chloe around so you can see. Yep, okay. Let's spin around again, head down, babe. You can see the triangle into rectangle. And this is using the back of the section as the guide. Here. Again, straight over the top. From the shape, we want to go and maintain that cutting line and just remove the bulk from inside so it's nice and soft. Spin around and then I think we're ready. Where's my brush? I think we're ready to shape the back and make sure that that is really complementing a face shape which it is, and we're starting to get that nice rectangular shape. Whereas before, before we did that, it was starting to become quite triangular, which you want to avoid, which we have. Okay, now it's time to um, sort the back out. We're going to shape that as well. Horizontal section. Doesn't have to be super neat. As long as you can control the hair, that's fine. Putting some texture and removing some of that weight out of the ends. It's really important that we project the hair when we're texturizing the ends to at or above 90 degrees so that when it falls, it actually falls soft. We don't want to end up with big, chunky chatter marks in the hair. And then pulling it out vertically Give that, those ends a little bit of a chance to move. Now what we want to do is rather than classic layering, we're going to use a layering projection and texturize the hair rather than changing the shape and the length because we don't want this overlayered, but there is a lot of hair falling at the ends. Chloe uh, has very fine hair, but she has lots of it. So for me, if we overlayer fine hair, it'll actually have the opposite effect. It can actually collapse it. So, we, and we don't want that. We want, we want it to be full, um, but at the same time, we don't want it to have imbalances in the density or the way it falls. And that can happen by having lightness around the face and then having lots of hair that just all falls at one point. So if we overlay the hair, it's gonna look really wispy and we don't want that, but we don't want it to look heavy on the ends either. It's, it's, it's almost like a contradiction because you're not layering the hair, but you're giving it a layered effect because if we layer the hair, obviously we're gonna shift the length all the way up and there'll be nothing left here. We want the fullness in the end, but we don't want the bulk. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense to you guys. It makes sense to me in my crazy mind, but so we just texturize within the length rather than cutting it shorter and creating variants or variations in the length of the hair. 
And again, similarly to how we did the underneath, we're gonna pull it all together again. I could already feel it, like it just feels easier to get my hand through there. It actually feels like the same sort of density as it does around the front. We bring this back, we do the same. Bring this in here and I would actually do it this way, but so you guys can see. And then you'll see when I do it this way. So again, we bring the hair back and we're removing that bulk inside. And as we have for every section, we bring it all into the middle again. And we project it vertically. And again, within the lengths, we want to create separation. That's feeling great. Last one. We just need to make sure that we have some synergy with the layering or the shaping we did around the front and the ends. That's a good catch, thanks Chloe. And we do that by just again ensuring that that weight and the feel and the texture of the hair is the same. Where the back meets the front, you can see it's just in there. Here it's nice and then there it's just a bit heavy. Oh, let's do some styling. What do you think? I love it. I think you look amazing. The only thing, stay right there, the only thing is you know what they say, the higher the hair, the closer to God. So we need some height riser. We just, all we need is just in that root area because you have such beautiful slinky hair and this way. Now you get your roots up there and you feel how that feels now. Look at that. Yeah. But that's just going to give us that little bit of lift and makes it playful and fun. <laughs> so those little flyaways, a little bit of smooth setter, a little bit of smooth setter makes everything better. <laughs> and again, just head to the side. I'm a big, big person, a big advocate, sorry, of putting product underneath this way. And this just, you know how you feel that one little hair tickling you on the face and it's annoying? That just fixes that up for you. What a way to start the year. I mean, um, amazing uh, transformation and I think look we spoke in the beginning about how short do we make it how long do we leave it look at those collarbones look at that shoulder line I was saying um, to Chloe for me you just needed that little bit of little bit of negative space between her hair and her shoulders obviously when it's uh, not um, curled it's going to be that little bit longer but you can see 
We can see light coming through there, and um, I think it's the absolute perfect length for you. Um, yeah, it's spot on, I reckon. Thanks for trusting me. Thank you so much. It's a big deal. That. Hasn't had a haircut for like, hasn't had hair done for years and years, and no. <laughs> goes from one extreme to the other. And look, the result's amazing. So, as <laughs> the rain's coming down outside, there, oof. it's going to go outside now and get rain all over in your hair. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in. And sorry, uh, I've been quite uh, distant and offline, but I uh, hope um, the first one back was one worth tuning into. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, and this is the first time you've seen Goofy Adam from Australia, um, please subscribe this year. I endeavour to create much uh, more content, fresh hair, um, something different, but always something that I think that is attainable to women and something they might like to have. I don't think that being creative is irrelevant, uh, but my channel is always about trying to share the haircuts that my clients are asking for each and every day. And hopefully if you're watching it out there in your hairdresser, it helps. And if you're watching it just because you like hair, then I hope you enjoy what you see and I hope you don't... Um, Think I'm too goofy because man, there were some bloopers today. Oof, I was a bit rusty, eh? Man, I had to do the intro like four times. I was struggling. Make sure you subscribe and also click the notification button. Um, until next time from Canberra, Australia. Thanks, Chloe. Thank you. It's bye from us. See ya. Bye.